Mrs. Amos. Well, that gal you see there throwing things in the suitcase is the kingfish's wife, Sapphire. Yes, sir, she's walked out on the old kingfish on a lot of different occasions. For instance, there was the time last September when he came home at 2 o'clock in the morning. attention flying off the handle like this. George Stevens, I ain't gonna stand for no husband of mine to come sneaking in at two o'clock in the morning. And don't tell me you was out playing cards. Good bop! <laughs> and then I remember the time last December. Snow was on the ground in Central Park. I never will forget. It was during the holidays. <laughs> Watch it, Kingfish. Here it comes. in the knitted dress. But I told you before, honey, I just wanted to see what stitch she used. <laughs> Not because I never want to see you again in my whole life. Uh, but honey. <laughs> and then there was the time this past Thursday. found a woman about five foot eight with a nasty disposition. She's been missing now about four days. Well, if you want to file a missing persons report, you'll have to give us a better description than that. Oh, well, she about that high. And her figure is... Oh, no, she more like that. That's hard to describe, eh? That's all right. Now, I'll tell you the best way to go about it, officer. If you find somebody that look like nobody you never found before, that her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it, it's been four days now, and the police ain't found no trace of her. <laughs> yeah, I was watching that missing persons program that the police put on television the other night. I see Sapphire's picture. It made me feel awful bad. It did, brother Andy. Yeah, I was eating at the time. <laughs> Listen, Andy. Ain't you got no sentiment? Ain't you got no heart? This ain't no joke. My wife gone. My little darling. My child bride. I tell you, Andy, I was all broke up. What you mean you was all broke up? Ain't this what you've been rooting for all your life? <laughs> now that she's gone, I really miss her. It's the little things I miss, Andy. Her gentle smile, the sound of her voice, the way the morning sun glances off at that bald spot on the back of her head. <laughs> yeah. Well, Kingfish, ain't you got no idea where she is? Andy, I got an idea that she's hibernating over at her mama's in Brooklyn. But every time I call up, the old lady done hung up on me. Yeah, yeah. Andy, come on. We going over there and see if we can't get to the bottom of this thing. Wait a minute, Kingfish. 
Ain't this mama of sapphires a little on the mean side? A little? Handy you take the venom of a cobra, the disposition of an alligator, and the nastiness of a rhinoceros, put them all together, they spell mother. <laughs> Well, Annie, here we is. Oh, so this is the fortress, eh, Kingfish? Now, let's step back out of range here. How do you do, mother-in-law, dear? George Kingfish Stevens? What are you doing over here in Brooklyn? You... We in luck, and We done caught it, good you. Well, Mama, excuse me for protruding, but this is my good friend, Andy Brown. Well, so now I got to look into the face of another fathead. Uh, likewise. You shut up! Well, look, Mama, I'll come right to the point. Sapphire been missing now for four days, and I come over here to find out if you knew where she was. I know where she is, but I ain't telling you. If Sapphire had taken my advice, she'd have left you 20 years ago. Now get out of here, Baldy. I ain't got no use for no man that can't support his wife. Now wait a minute, Mama. If you come back to me, I'll change. I'll become hardworking and unconscientious. I'll be a captain of industry. I'll have a big bank account. Huh. I'll buy a ruby, jewel, ring, bracelet, diamond. Ah, oh, shut up! <laughs> Well, what do you want now? Look, Mom, could you lend us a dime so me and my friend could get back to New York? Yeah! <laughs> How do you like that old ghost? She know where Sapphire is, but she won't tell me. I gotta find my wife, Andy. I tell you, I just gotta. <laughs> Well, at the end of the week, Sapphire was still missing. But one day, over on Amsterdam Avenue, Lightning had done spotted on the street and decided to follow her. Oh, me. That's the fastest walking woman I done ever seen. Really? I just got a line on Sapphire. Lightning spotted her on the street and followed her. Uh, she went in the Quigley building over on Amsterdam Avenue. Yeah, she didn't go up to the fourth floor. Meet me over there right away. I gotta find out what she's doing over there. Now hurry, because we ain't got a moment to spare. But... Why don't you hang up so I can get out of here? <laughs> Lightning said he'd seen Sapphire going into room 411. This is 405. Uh, 407. Chose a lot of doctors in this building, Andy. Yeah. I hope Sapphire ain't sick. Oh, here we are, Andy. 411. Hmm. Dr. Henry M. Jackson. Obstetrician. I didn't know Sapphire was having trouble with her eyes. <laughs> oh, no, you stupid. Obstetrician don't mean an eye, doctor. You were thinking of, uh, ostrich path. You know, Kingfish, mm. I think we is both wrong. Yeah. Let's examine that word here a minute. Obstetrician. <laughs> I wonder what kind of specialist that is anyway. She ain't losing her hair, is she? <laughs> oh, no, this ain't no hair, doctor. I know that. But I tell you, Andy, I just got to find out what's wrong with Sapphire. Yeah. Tell you what, Kingfish, we'll stand here and wait till a woman comes out and ask her what's wrong with her. <laughs> no, I got a better idea. We'll call up this Dr. Jackson and make an appointment for myself. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's right. And in that way, I can tell what type doctor he is. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Jackson, Jackson, Jackson. Oh, there it is. Dr. Henry M. Jackson, Lehigh 78241. That's it. That's a good idea, all right. 
find out what he specialized in and tell him you got it. The nurse is answering. Oh, How do you do? I would like to make an appointment uh, with Dr. Jackson. Ah, uh, no, no, uh, for myself. <laughs> What'd she say? I don't know. She ain't stopped laughing. Now, look, miss. I asked you just as nice as I could for you to make an appointment for me with Dr. Jackson. What do you mean he can't take me? Hmm. This is a free country, and for what reason would the doctor refuse to see me? Oh, well, I ain't heard a good reason as that in a long time. Look, Kingfish, if the doctor won't see you, maybe I could make an appointment with him. If it can't happen to me, it can't happen to you. <laughs> Goodbye, miss. Thanks. Anyway. Hey, Fish, what kind of a doctor is he? Well, Andy, he's, uh... Andy. Andy. Andy, let me lean on you. Andy. Andy, help me to a chair. Andy. I'm going to have a baby. Hello, Mama. How are you? Fine. I got some wonderful news for you. I just come to Henry M. Jackson, and it looks like I got the job. Yes, Dr. Jackson, the baby doctor. That's right. He wants a nursemaid for his baby. Oh, I sure hope I get the job. <laughs> of course not, Mama. George don't know a thing that's going on. Have another cigar, Andy. <laughs> I pretty well fixed already, Kingfish. Andy, it's wonderful having a baby. Oh, yeah. I is really thrilled about my papahood. Yeah. I'll tell you, Andy, the old Kingfish gonna have a little sardine, a little baby to hold in my arms. Yeah. Go to sleep, my baby. To -ra -lo -ra -lo -ra. Sweet little thing. Hey, Fish, you putting the baby in the ashtray. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, you're dumb indeed, old baby, yeah? <laughs> oh, boy, we're going to have a lot of fun playing with your baby and everything. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's going to be crazy. I'm going to take him down to the pool hall and introduce him to the boys. Yeah. Oh, I'll tell you, it's going to... Hi, Amos. Hi, Colin. Hi, Amos. Say, what's this I hear about Sapphire having a baby, King D? That's right, Amos. I'm going to have a little off sprout. Take one. Going to have a lot of fun with your little sprout, too. Oh, yeah. Kingfish is going to teach him how to shoot pool and everything. <laughs> well, babies is a lot of fun. Yeah. But being a father, that's a pretty serious thing. Oh, what do you mean, serious? All they got to do is keep him filled up in milk and pab them and keep chucking them under the chin. I think you got the wrong idea about babies, Kingfish. Being a father, that's a big responsibility. You ain't got no job, no money. To tell you the truth, you my friend and everything, but I don't much blame Sapphire for leaving you. Yeah, Amos. Maybe she is kind of ashamed of me being the baby's papa. Yeah, a fine father you're gonna make. Now, wait a minute here. I know I ain't got no job. And, well, I ain't much. But maybe I could get a job. Maybe I could make something out of myself. I'm gonna do it, boys. I don't want my little boy having a nobody for a father. I want him to be proud of me, proud of his daddy. You get a job? Ha, ha, ha. Fat chance of that. All right, I'll show you. Farewell, my false friend. I now go forth to brave the horror of employment. <laughs> Oh, thank you, sir. And believe me, I'll handle the job to the best of my ability. I'm depending upon you, Stevens. I'm putting you in charge of our bituminous thermal output. Bituminous thermal output? That's right. Oh, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thermal output. All right, Stevens, get going there. Oh, hello, ladies. Oh, hi, Mr. 
Uh, hey, where's Ann and the Kingfish? Uh, they ain't here this evening. Hey, Mr. Kingfish's wife is gonna have a baby. Did you hear about it? Yeah, I know all about it, lady. Uh, right now, they're over to the, excuse me, over to the hospital. Hospital? Yeah, the, uh, Papa Clinic. Papa Clinic? Uh-huh. They, they're learning all about how to take care of a baby. Oh. They're having a the time over there, I bet you. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> See you later, lady. Uh, bye, Miss Amos. And now, gentlemen, this course is to acquaint the father with the proper care and feeding of the infant. Would you, uh, come around here, please? Yes, ma'am. Now, um, which one of you is the father? I. And is this your first child? Oh, no, no, uh, this is just Andy Brown, a friend of mine. <laughs> now, let's understand each other. The instructions were scheduled at 7.30. It's now 8.15. The rest of the class has gone. But I'm willing to go through the course again for you. But I must insist on cooperation. Uh, yes, ma'am. Now, the first step in handling a newborn infant. We must at all times place the surgical mask over our face like this. Oh, I see. That's so the baby won't bite your nose, huh? The purpose of the mask is to prevent the spread of germs. I can't understand you with the mask on. Oh, I'm sorry. You see, we wear this mask because in the case of a newborn infant, after the immunization period has terminated, the child becomes highly susceptible to various categories of toxic infections. What is she talking about, Kingfish? I don't know. I understood her better with the mask on. Cooperation, please. Yes, ma'am. Now, to pick up the baby, you place your hand under the infant's head like that, then the other hand under him firmly. Then you lift gently. Very well now. You try it. Under his head. That's right. Firmly now. Oh, look at me, Andy. I'm holding him. I'm holding him. Toora loora loora. Toora loora. That's the way to hold him, King. Take your hands off of my baby. Oh, I only want to show you how to hold him. I can't let go of him. Oh, look at him. Show him. And turn the baby loose. What do you do when this happens? This morning I had four cases of chicken pox. After that there were two cases of mumps. A baby hit me on the head with a bottle. I missed my supper. And now you come in. I think I have given enough to the cause of medicine for the day. Good night! Nurse, that is. I think we ought to report her to Franz Nightingale. <laughs> yes, Mrs. Stephen, that'll be fine. Tuesday is the day. I'm so happy, Doctor. By the way, my husband's been following me, and if by any chance he should call and ask any questions, I'd appreciate it if you didn't say nothing about this. Oh, yes, of course. I understand. Mrs. Stevens. I knew the first day the employment agency sent you over here that you'd make a wonderful nurse for my 18-month-old son, Johnny. Thank you, Doctor. And incidentally, Miss Stevens, Johnny's mother took him to St. John's Hospital this morning for a checkup. Nothing serious. I wonder if you'd pick him up and take him home. I'd be glad to. And I know me and little Johnny will get along just fine. All uh, right, goodbye. Goodbye. She goes in that building across the street there. H O. Holy smoke! Today is the day. <laughs> Andy, she's been in there 15 minutes now. I can't stand it no more. I can't leave my wife alone at a time like this. How do you think this? Look. Andy, 
she must have broke the world record. Not in my chance. I've got to see my baby. Come on. Yeah. This is something, all right. Uh, uh. <laughs> my tiny little baby. <laughs> this daddy. Uh, yeah. And this is Uncle Andy. <laughs> That is the biggest 15-minute old baby I've ever seen. Why, naturally he be. He's unusual. He's my son. Oh, yeah. Look at Andy. Uh, uh, look, Andy. He, he got my nose. He got my eyes. <laughs> you look like he's got your teeth, too. Look at Andy. My baby. Kingfish. Sapphire will be coming out of the drugstore any minute. We better beat it. Oh. Kingfish, let's go. We better beat it. Huh? All right, Andy. Bye bye, my little darling. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. Andy, did you hear that? Only 18 minutes old and talking already. <laughs> Uh, that's right, Andy. I called Sapphire up over to her mama, and I told her I had a job and everything, and I wanted to talk the whole thing over. Yeah, she coming over this evening. No, she didn't say nothing about the baby. I guess she wanted to surprise me with that. Uh, that's all now, Andy. I I'll call you later, son. Oh, George. Sapphire, darling. Am I glad to see you. Now, now, don't adjust yourself, honey. Now, just lean on me a little. Yeah, now, there you go. Now, now, sit right down there. Why, George, I can't get over it. You didn't change so much. Oh, yeah, honey. I got a job and everything. And every week, I'm going to turn my paycheck over to you. I'll tell you, honey, I'm a change man. Oh, that's wonderful. And, George, there's something I want to tell you. It's sort of a... Um, little surprise. Is it about Dr. Jackson? Why, yes, George. How did you know? <laughs> I got a little way to find out them things. George, don't I smell fresh paint? That's another surprise I got for you. I don't have the extra bedroom redecorated. But do you think we really need the extra bedroom? Oh, certainly, honey. With the three of us here, we're going to need it. And I tell you, honey, from now on, the three of us going to be really, really happy here. Joy. Now, wait a minute. I'll tell you what to do, honey. Now, you go over to Brooklyn and get your suitcases, and I'll have everything all ready for the three of us when you get back. But, Joy. Now, don't worry about a thing. When you get back, I'll have the extra bedroom all fixed. The three of us. I wonder what George could have meant by the three of us. Thank <laughs> you. 